Three U.S. senators have introduced legislation, urging the Biden administration to push India to accelerate its transition away from Russian weaponry. The amendment mentioned that India confronts border challenges from China and Pakistan. Senator Mark Warner, County Chair of the Senate India Caucus, along with Senators Jack Reed and Jim Inhofe, in the amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act, says that India faces urgent and substantial regional border threats from China, with continuing military aggressiveness along the India-China border, forcing the country to depend on Russia for emergency defense requirements. The amendment stated, India depends on Russian-made weaponry for its national defense. And Russia has been a significant supplier of military equipment to India. It said, in October 2018, India struck a $5 billion agreement with Russia to purchase five S-400 air defense missile systems, despite the US warning that proceeding with the sale might result in penalties under the terms of the Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act. And Russia began delivering the first regiment of missile systems in December of last year, and that it has been deployed to protect areas of the northern border with China, as well as the border with Pakistan. The amendment also mentioned the vital Indo-Pacific area. The amendment stated that a strong U.S.-India defense partnership rooted in shared democratic values and is critical to advancing Washington's interests in the strategic Indo-Pacific region. And such partnership between the world's oldest and largest democracies is critical and should be strengthened in response to increasing threats in the Indo-Pacific region so as to send an unequivocal signal that sovereignty and international law must be respected. China, which has territorial conflicts with numerous nations in the strategic Indo-Pacific region, has been critical of the United States' assertive strategy, particularly in the disputed South China Sea. The US asserts no territorial claim in the SCS and takes no stance on sovereignty over any of its geographic features, but has advocated that issues be addressed without force and based on international law. Separate from sovereignty issues, the US and China disagree over international law's rights to fly, sail, and operate in a country's territorial sea or exclusive economic zone. India, on the other hand, is not directly engaged in the South China Sea issues, but has initiated gas exploration in the areas claimed by China. And, since India is the only nation in Asia capable of opposing China, it would be helpful for the United States if India, one of the world's oldest and biggest democracies, joined the United States in combating the menace in the South China Sea. The last few American administrations have seen India as a geopolitical counterbalance, an economic alternative, and a democratic contrast to China that may show that prosperity and democracy are not mutually opposites. This, in turn, has paved the way for the view that India's rise is in the best interests of the United States, and should be supported for more military and security cooperation and for administrations to make the case for India to be granted exceptions, example the civil nuclear deal or, or Indo-US nuclear deal. On July 18, 2005, then Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and then US President George W. Bush issued a joint statement that laid the groundwork for this deal. In the declaration, India promised to maintain civil and military nuclear installations separate and to subject all civil nuclear facilities to the International Atomic Energy Agency's oversight. And in return, the United States agreed to cooperate with India to achieve complete civil nuclear cooperation. And Indian leaders have cited the country's democratic character as justification for such exclusions and a basis for its credibility, both in the United States and abroad. U.S.-India Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technologies this amendment applauds the U.S.-India initiative on critical and emerging technologies, describing it as a critical step toward closer collaboration between the two countries, governments, academia, and industry, in order to address the most recent advances in artificial intelligence, quantum computing, biotechnology, aerospace, and semiconductor manufacturing. The proposed amendment stated that collaborations between engineers and computer scientists through the United States-India Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technologies are vital to help ensure that the United States, India, and other democracies around the world foster innovation and facilitate technological advances that continue to far outpace the technology of the Russian and China. But the question is, if the Biden administration would agree to this change, 
since it seems that Biden is more interested in Pakistan, which breeds terrorists, than in India, 